law schools and the profession ought to devote a great amount of attention and energy to studying and understanding the deep social problems of our times. This is the kind of education that we are committed to here. We are positioned to be leaders. Leaders tasked with serving our society and envisioning a better world. The land that would one day become the province of Manitoba has a long history. For thousands of years, indigenous people have met and traded by its waterways. With the arrival of European settlers, treaties would be negotiated that would form the relationships that the country would be based upon. By the time Manitoba entered Confederation in 1870, population growth and industrial expansion was placing new demands on the province and its legal system. There were no lawyers trained in Manitoba, but Manitoba began to boom, and so Winnipeg in particular was a big commercial centre, and that led to a big demand for lawyers. At the turn of the century, Winnipeg was one of the fastest growing cities in North America, and things didn't seem to be slowing down. By 1914, the growth of Manitoba and Winnipeg was really at a peak. Those were the days when Winnipeg was being called the Chicago of the North. This incredible period of expansion and development placed new demands on the legal profession. At the time, lawyers in Winnipeg were trained through a practical program of clerking at a local law firm or gained their professional qualification out of province. That system was unable to meet the demands of a city on the rise. There's a tremendous connection between the economy of a country and its legal system. October of 1914, uh, there was an agreement between the University of Manitoba and the Law Society of Manitoba to create a law school. The person who concentrated on it most was Mr. Justice Robson, who highly valued education and he spearheaded cooperation between the university and the Law Society. Robson was supported by a young lawyer, E.K. Williams, and the two men worked tirelessly to establish a permanent school of law for the province of Manitoba. The mission of the law school would have been providing the province with well-trained, well-educated lawyers who could serve all of the needs of that thriving, bustling, growing new community. The Manitoba Law School was formed in 1914 with classes taking place in the newly built YMCA building in downtown Winnipeg. Students paid a rate of $30 to study during that inaugural year. Word spread quickly, and the school's opening was dubbed a milestone in provincial legal history. Canada was at war when the school first opened its doors, a war unlike any the world has ever seen, a war which saw staff and students alike answering their country's call to service. Throughout the First World War, the law school endured despite the difficult times. It would in fact produce many notable firsts, including educating Manitoba's first female lawyers. In 1919, with the war finally over, servicemen returned home to a province ready to move forward again. The Roaring Twenties provided the school with a renewed sense of optimism and growth. The faculty graduated large classes which were put to work in the city's thriving economy. By the end of the decade, the school, like the rest of the world, was feeling the economic downturn, which would herald the onset of the Great Depression. Salaries were cut, enrollment declined, and the school produced only a single graduate in the class of 1930. The Great Depression made it really impossible for a lot of people to afford to study law. It also reduced the clientele because business was down, so therefore business for lawyers was down. By the end of the 1930s, with the world slowly recovering from the Depression, enrollment began to rise. The law school moved to the law courthouse on Broadway to accommodate this renewed growth. In 1939, Canada entered the Second World War. Staff and students once again proudly served and sacrificed for the war effort. Both world wars, the school shrunk uh, to almost nothing because a university age student is exactly the age that will be recruited for war. Following World War II in particular, there was almost a tsunami of men coming back from the war who wanted to study law. 
special consideration was given to war veterans on their return after the war uh, for admission into the course. It was a reflection that a debt was owed and that there needed to be accommodation made for those people. The school quickly found itself both understaffed and in need of more space as it tried to meet this growing demand for legal education. By 1950, the school was once again forced to move, this time to the Manitoba Law Courts. As the school celebrated its 50th anniversary, a radical shift in curriculum would be implemented. Students would no longer work at local firms while they attended classes, but instead focus solely on their studies at the university. This shift signaled a change of emphasis in the study of law, from practical on-the-job experience to academic study. It was a major leap from the mindset that said the only way to learn law is to do it. Cliff Edwards, who served as the dean from 1964 to 1979, was the visionary who led the law school through this period of change and to its new home at the University of Manitoba. Plans were put into motion for its construction. In 1969, at a gala celebration, the school would christen its newly built facility, Robson Hall, named for one of its original founders, H.A. Robson. The grand opening of the law school was a wonderful event. We had all sorts of illustrious guests. If we never do anything which has not been done before, we shall never get anywhere. The law will stand still while the rest of the world goes on, and that will be bad for both. The late 60s was a time of change for Canadian society, a time which dramatically altered the face of academic institutions across the country. When I entered first year law in 1972, the class before me had six women in it. The class that I was in had 25 women. So everyone was quite surprised once you get a significant amount of women in an institution, change happens. The 1970s would produce one of the school's most important programs, the Legal Aid Clinic. The clinic would provide free legal aid to those unable to afford it, while offering students their first practical experience with the law. The Legal Aid Program was the first of its kind in the country, and I think it's evidence of the deep uh, concern here for social significance of the law and uh, making the law available to people broadly. It was part of that whole realization of trying to provide uh, access to justice to lower income segments of the community and we have an obligation to use our knowledge and our power and our privilege to help people. Lawyers who do this kind of work always come away with a great sense of, of, of satisfaction because of the fact that they've been able to help people who really needed help. Robson Hall continued to evolve its curriculum to address contemporary issues while striving to give its students a balance of practical experience and academic education. Through the 80s and 90s, Robson Hall placed a special emphasis on business, both locally with the Marcel Desotel Center and internationally with the Asper Chair in International Business and Trade Law. The Asper Chair recognizes that Winnipeg and Manitoba really has an international dimension. The recognition for students that from here you can go anywhere is, I think, very powerful. Bon après-midi, Meg Wench. Welcome to this uh, new class of future lawyers. Throughout its long history, during triumphs and during hardship, the one constant for the school has always been to effect positive change for the province of Manitoba. This faculty has become a leader and a champion for human rights. I think it's been cultivated because of where we are. We're in a province um, that has been at the forefront of certain human rights issues. And with that concentration of interest here in a community that is open and embracing rights, I think those things feed on each other and really strengthen this school's commitment and, and direction and impulse in that way. The practice of law has the potential to be a useful means by which we can accomplish great ends. Uh, but it begins by standing up for those things that are right. As Aboriginal people, we, we had rights that had long been ignored. We need to have a, an increased awareness and appreciation for what Aboriginal people have brought to the table so that young Indigenous people growing up 
have a, a growing sense of pride about who they are so that they can feel connected to this nation in a proper way. Access to justice in French is very important. There are some courses that are offered in French here. Um, it's just starting, obviously, but it's developing in the right direction. When JP explains to me some of the things he does in law school, and some of the projects they have with the professors, and some of the facilities that they have, I feel that it's evolved in the right way. One of the really important things about law is the combination of being just and caring. Uh, that justice matters, caring about other people matters, building a civil society matters. And I think this kind of deep rootedness in a concern about what kind of society do we want to live in is one of the things that's really important about the study of law. For 100 years, the University of Manitoba Faculty of Law has graduated students whose contributions have served the legal profession both at home and abroad. Everyone that passes through its halls plays an important part in its rich history and legacy. The students get to define success for themselves. When they leave here, hopefully they leave with some of the things that we taught them and those things will set them on a path that allows them to achieve the success that they want. The people that I have learned from here share such a passion in the areas of law that they have instilled that passion in me and it allows me to express that passion to my clients. So for me, I wouldn't change my experience here at Robson Hall for anything. Robson Hall uh, prepared me for going out into the legal world and into my clerkship at the Supreme Court in a lot of ways. It gave me a really good, well-rounded education. But at the same time, the professors really challenged me to think critically about the law. Having that Robson Hall degree, in a sense, kind of speaks for itself because you're part of that bigger community that you feel proud to be a part of. Good morning, class. Good morning. I feel great about the future of Robson Hall. I think we have some great faculty members doing some really fantastic research. What we have is a really amazing environment with some incredible scholars and I think that we'll be graduating students who are going to be leaders in the community. For our law school to continue to have a positive influence into the future, I think it needs to build on the strong foundations over the past century. The idea that law serves the community. And to me, that is a signature of this law school. And the future is bright because of our students and because of the teachers we have who are committed to the role of law in our society. These things are the things that give us a bright future for Robson Hall, where we'll be relevant and ahead of the curve and helping to build the kind of world that we want to leave to those who come after us. <laughs>